Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos on thinktechhawaii.com. I want to welcome you here today. We have a really wonderful show here. I am here with Kim Partner and Emilani Makepa Foley Wong. Did I say it right? You did. <laughs> okay, good. Um, we are going to be talking about natural healing. So often when people have to experience abuse, our bodies sort of hold it and it affects our health in many, many ways. And there's lots of different alternative approaches that you can use to help to treat these issues that come up. For me, I have lupus and I have Crohn's disease and I have fought both of those for many, many years. I've had 25 surgeries and in the last 15 years and I've almost died like five times. But I moved here, and since I moved here in the last five years, I have not had one single surgery. I've only had two hospital stays, and I've just seen a marked improvement in my health with the natural foods, the, you know, I eat what grows across the street now, and, and all of the different medicinal herbs or plants, I should say, that are used for natural healing. And so that's what we're here to talk about today, to show people that are out there that might be experiencing some of these physical things, that there is um, alternatives to just going to the doctor, right? And sometimes even more effective than just going to the doctor. But we do want to say, as just a little cautionary in the beginning before we really get involved in all of this, that don't go out and just start picking plants, okay, <laughs> and taking them until you talk to a practitioner, talk to your doctor. But there is a lot of hope and healing out there in, in our natural plants that we find right in front of us every day. So I want to welcome you guys here. Kim, I'd like it if you would please tell us a little bit more about the stuff, a little bit about the stuff that you've gone through in your life and how some of these plants and herbs have helped you. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, for me, I also uh, suffered with lupus for basically all my life. Oh. And, but I had a lot of symptoms along the way. Um, I have a photo that shows about, uh, I had alopecia break out really bad in my right, head. I think we do have a photo of that, yeah. And, uh, so that was like, uh, I was 47 then, because my age is on there. So uh, <laughs> it was really bad to the point where I couldn't even uh, function. It was, it was burning and everything like that, and the doctor was coming up with all kind of things, saying that it was like some hair fungus. Uh, I have a rare hair thing. I mean, it's really interesting when you are diagnosed with lupus, right. you get diagnosed with all different types of other things before they actually right. say it's lupus. And so for me, um, I just kept pushing through. And that actually finally kind of subsided away. And then I ended up with uh, other issues along the way, fingers turning blue, mm -hmm. which brought on the total red flag and they said, you have lupus. Right. But leading up to that, I went through quite a bit of trauma. I did... Um, foster care for six years uh, for very high needs kids for Puyallup Tribe back home in Washington State. Oh my gosh, that's and, huge, um, right? Uh, and I love my kids. I wouldn't change a thing, you know. Um, and in the midst of that, I had relationships that were, you know, abusive and, you know, taking on that. And then I found out later on, uh, I had a cousin who had lupus, which is like my sister cousin, because my aunt had passed away early. Mm -hmm. And so my mom ended up raising her. Oh, so right. we went to school, we were like this best buds, everything. Right. And I find out uh, that she was in the hospital for six months oh, and wow. dealing with inflammation in the brain. And um, like six months later, she had passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so was it, it just lupus really, it was lupus, had? yeah, was the lupus. inflammation. Well, because with lupus, you get inflammation in your knees, everything else, and right. that's where the arthritis gets introduced to your body in an extreme way, um, in your stomach, digestional tract, hers just led through her whole entire body. Oh. They used to have to wrap her and, and stuff like that. So it was really uh, heartbreaking and just a lot for me. Right. Yeah, and so and on top of that, me, you know, I worked at a high school for 12 years as security. 
uh, loving the kids. That's just my thing. I love the kids. I know you'd be so great. <laughs> I just love the kids. So um, one of my best friends there who was born in Molokai, and he's like, uh, man, what's going on with you? And, right. uh, and uh, he speaks from the heart like most Hawaiians do. They just see it and they tell you, hey, get out of here. What are you doing? Right. You've worked here long enough. Take some of that retirement. Get out of here, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, still to this day, I just thank him and I give him all the glory because I did exactly what he said. You know, I got my first ticket and I went to Kona and uh, stayed there for two weeks. Got a car, drove out to Black Sand Beach, and just sat there in the water like he told me to do. And there was a whole new on shore over to the distance. It was just so perfect and just nice. healing. And I was like, okay, I got it. So, you know, next thing I do, I went back home, packed up everything, put in my time, and came back here and even got blessed with a decent place to rent. And, nice. you know, so it was all meant to be, it was all laid mm -hmm. out. So, you know, Keakua there you know yeah. so I just I love it um, okay so since you've been here now now yeah. you've had you've noticed some changes in your oh health my gosh, right? yes. so now let's start talking about what the, the changes stuff, yeah. and all those things that have happened since and some of the things that have brought you to this healing place well when I first got here I I got right into the plow so I started working out over at the ag station for UH Manoa with uh, Auntie Lima. When you say right into the plow, like just. I want to make sure everybody understands. Oh, what like, you mean by that? Just like right into the plow. <laughs> As like, in getting you know, your hands into the dirt and, and, and learning, <laughs> okay. what it's, learning what it's all about. Nice. Yeah. And so, um, and learning from that, and I learned a little bit there, and uh, then I joined Windward Community College and right. was introduced to this amazing Kumu <laughs> in Milani, and. Um, she started teaching some magnificent types of things to make you actually, it's not just about the medicine, it's spiritual. Right. You got to be ready for it. You got to cleanse yourself. You, you need to fast. Something that I was used to doing was fasting, but I wasn't fasting to heal myself. I wasn't fasting to bring in medicine. And right. so my biggest warrior is the Olena. Oh, Lena, yeah. and that is this one right here, yeah? Yeah, this is this. this. Is, talk to us about this one. So and this it's one. this one right here also, right? Yes, this is that I also grow okay. in my aquaponic system. Nice. And so this warrior here can kill just about anything. There's just different doses that you wanted to apply to what you're going to take. So I use it during the time of my lupus flare-ups. I would use it on a shot every day. So I put it in my mortal pesto. And I think we have a picture of that too, don't we? Yeah. Where you can kind of see all the different things that you use to yeah. prepare your, and it's also known as turmeric, right? Exactly. Okay. Yes, yes, it's, so it's a tubular family. Right. So uh, put it in the mortal pesto, then squeeze it through the cheesecloth and just do a shot every morning. Every morning. Every morning, and I did that consistently for um, about six months to a year. Wow. And just uh, last month, I went back and had my blood test taken, and all my ANAs are negative. So an ANA is a, a, what they use to measure whether or not you've got um, lupus, and yeah. if you're lupus in a flare, yeah. or, or just where you are in yes. that sense yes. of that. That's amazing to me yes. to go in that short of a time. Oh, my word. Wow. Yeah. I was, and I was told that it can go that quick. You just have to be dedicated. And, right. you know, change your foods. I did take uh, red meats out of my diet. I took bread. I took white flours and, and rice, you know, right. all those things. Out. We were just talking about that, too, the other day when we were all together, um, yeah. about that taking bread out of your diet and how much of a change that makes in, in how your body is able to fight off things or, you know, use yeah. even use your nutrients yeah. the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Such a difference. So Kim and I met when we were in botany together, and we were talking about, hey, you have lupus? Hey, I have lupus. <laughs> hey, man, we should make a show about this because it's helping people. Right. right. Right? And so that's when the whole thing started to sort of bake into our heads, and we're like, yes, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So I want everyone to know what this looks like so that they can see it and know it's called Olena is the Hawaiian name. And uh, then the scientist, is it the scientific name that would be turmeric or? Yeah. What's, is that right? It's curcumalanga. It's what now? Curcumalanga. Curcumalanga. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Olena. 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 <laughs> I think Olena it might just be easier to say. <laughs> right, absolutely. So there's other stuff that you use too, right? Um, uh, there's a tea, right? Oh, mamaki tea. Mamaki tea, and I think we have a picture of the mamaki. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, there yes. we go. We got a picture of what mamaki looks like. Which is also awesome for low blood pressure, uh, high blood pressure, and inflammation in the body. It's uh, amazing. Another warrior out there that lives here on the island. It's just absolutely magnificent. So I love it when you call them warriors. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> this is kind of what they are in a way. And they're all just God-given. That's what I love about yeah. it. It's not cooked up in some pharmacy somewhere. Right. It's going to have all these crazy side effects. And when I was in Alabama before I moved here, I was on 32 medicines. Yeah. I was on six just for one. And when I got to that point, I said, this is insane. Yeah. I gotta get out of here. You know, like the guy who came and said, you gotta get out of here. Yeah, get out of My here. own heart said, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and that was when I started making the move to come here. Because, and now I'm on seven. Oh, so awesome. I went from 32 to seven. Awesome. Which and and each one of them probably had like just a tidbit of turmeric in it or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how they keep you coming is that they put just a tidbit and it's, it's like this is the healer but we don't want them to heal all the way so we're going to put this right here. Yeah, right. You got to watch yeah. out for the yeah. pharmaceutical companies because yeah. they don't like this stuff. It's no, true. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that's just kind of too bad. <laughs> so we got another one here too, right? We've got uh, ginger. Yes. Here, tell us about this one. So ginger, which is another tubular plant related to here, um, mm -hmm. this one is really good for also uh, inflammation in the body, fungus in the body. Um, I use this one as well just for, um, I use it also for late weight loss. Like I Ginger for weight loss? Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. It helps burn, like, the gets your metabolism going and everything. So right. I do the same thing, clean it really good, peel it. Grind it in the pesto, put it in this uh, cheesecloth. Right. And I will add it to like some Pellegrino. And just kind of drink it throughout the day. And you kind of feel your body kind of like, ooh, like, right. It's like, so it's really good. There's a lot of little things out there. There's a, uh, loads and loads of recipes out there. I wouldn't advise taking heat to any of them all at once, but really nice useful ones out there to right. help with uh, so what about like candy ginger does it do the same thing no. like if you get the, i know no. this question is probably for no. that would be uh <laughs> white sugar in there the white, white sugar, sugar which, which discounts is, all the healing properties of gone. ginger out the door. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so well, of course i didn't even think about that yeah but so did you use any noni at all i do use noni with, um i use it uh when i'm really really sick because uh, for me, Noni worked for me as an absolute cleanser. Ah. So um, I would take it like on a Friday and literally it will detox throughout the whole weekend for me. Wow. So, and it works different for a lot of people. I, I, I've known This is people, Noni right here, yeah, yeah that you're looking I, at. That's the fruit, and I'll tell you though, that fruit, when I first moved here. It's ratchet. This <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Somebody said take it and yeah. put it in the fridge until it gets all squishy, <laughs> and then take a little bit of the juice and put yeah. it in some juice every day. I couldn't even open my yeah. fridge. I'm yeah, just like, like, oh yeah. no, I yeah. can't do it. But on on the other side of that, I have lots of issues with arthritis and um, one leg that doesn't work quite right, so I fall a lot. Mm. And so I'll have these injuries. And I had um, a local gal who works at the front desk at my um, doctor's office, and she said, listen, I want you to go get you some noni leaves yes. and get them warm, yes. heat them up, and then put them on your legs. Grab that, yeah. The first two injuries I had took months to get rid of. Mm -hmm. When I used that with the noni leaves on it, it was like I was I maybe two weeks mm -hmm. instead of two months, yeah, and I was healed. It was amazing. Yeah, the noni is like a puller. The the leaf itself, I use them as well. For and you can use them if you have like some stomach problems going on. Take a leaf and just put it on your liver area, right? And it'll help pull out toxins as well. Noni is amazing. It is amazing, and all these, we've got more amazing things to tell you too, but right now we gotta take a break. We'll be right back. Um, I hope you'll stay with us. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair. This is Finding Respect in the Chaos. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire 
all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hello, welcome back to Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm glad that you came back to join us again. I'm here with Kim and Emilani. Sorry, I almost went blah, blah, blah with the names. I don't know why I do that with names. I'm so sorry. But Kim and Emilani, we've been talking with Kim about some of the amazing healing things that, that she has gotten from different natural plants and herbs that grow that are, are native Hawaiian plants. And Emilani is an instructor in Laulapa'au, which I would love it if you would explain to our audience just exactly what Laulapa'au is and what it means and all of that. Okay. Um, yeah, so Laulapa'au is, um, in its most general term, is, is plant medicine. The Lapa'au is, the, is healing, and La'o means plant. Right, so, however, um, it's it goes a lot deeper than just just the plants. Yeah, right. and Kim had mentioned a little bit um, about certain plants work for certain people, and other plants, you know, um, don't necessarily work for them for that <laughs> right, particular sure. time. And that's all because of the the basis of lao. The foundation is a spiritual foundation. It's based off of akua and um, the reliance that that people have for akua and for aina and for and for the um, yeah, for the spirit that moves to heal. Right. And so, um, la'olapa'o, even though it means in, like, quite literally medicine, plant medicine, it, um, it, some piece, our kupuna used, used sometimes no plants at all. Yeah, just from the, just from spirit, they were able to heal. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just from like going and sitting in a place surrounded by these plants and the spiritual place that it takes the people's hearts? Um, I think I think it's a more of a combination of what you come with, you know, uh, what type right. of mana you come with, and then also in acquisition of mana, right, and, and what types of things you learn. So my, um, my kumu taught us about the cognitive and in, the intuitive, right? So how cognitively we can understand that this plant can be used for this and this plant can be used for this. Right. But without spirit, the plants, the you're not going to get your desired result. You know, it's centered around pule, and it's centered around prayer and around spirit. And the plants are the warriors that help carry out the carry out the healing. You know, and not just right. plants, minerals, right? Sure. Um, different types of animal products, different types of all kinds of different products, right? But right. all all natural. But all natural, natural, which is what so. So Lala Pao is always for, for natural, mm -hmm. or not always. Natural mm -hmm. healing, whether it be spiritual or um, plant based. Um, well, I think I think one thing is that um, Laola Pao, because of its nature, is geared towards the person, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on what they need. So it's right. it's really up to it's really up to the practitioner in in figuring out, um, you know, being led by spirit being led by Na'o in order to, to figure out the plan for that particular person. Now in Kim's case, she took a class from me and she she not only took it as a cognitive, oh, this is great and this plan is used for this and this plan is used for this. Instead, she, she used the tools that she was given and applied them to herself so that she could do her own self-healing, which is what which is what the aim and the goal is for that for that introduction for that introductory class, you know, is for you to take Take these concepts and take, um, you know, the 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 warriors that we're teaching you, and apply them to yourself in looking for the trauma and looking for the the places where the you know that illness and that disease was able to you know manifest through, you know. So I really applaud Kim in in doing that. You know, taking taking right. what she learned from the class and applying it not just with the not just with the cognitive and knowing oh this can be used for this but really looking and working on herself in the process you know? 
Right, and I know what you mean. I think, I know, good job, Kim. I'm very proud of you, too. And look, your hair is gorgeous. It's come uh -huh. back. Mahalo. You don't have to suffer with all that anymore. And no I'm pain. so glad yeah. you don't have to suffer with that Full anymore. Head hair. Yeah. What a it's difference nice. it makes, it's a right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. What a difference. I know, like you said about being, some people can do it. It's, you know, it's good for one person. It's not so good for another. I tried the term wreck, and I wasn't able to do it because of the, my Crohn's disease. And I try not to call it mine. I try to call it the Crohn's yeah. name. I'm, I'm trying to retrain my yeah. brain to not yeah. even call it mine. Yeah. <laughs> but so the the Crohn's disease makes it really difficult for me to um, to digest the turmeric. It seems like mm -hmm. it's too spicy for me somehow. I don't know. Yeah. I'm still. I'm not putting it off out of the realm of possibilities yeah, still, yeah. right? But I know I want to come back to Winward and take one of your classes. Yeah, this is what I'd really like to do. Since we've been meeting and talking and stuff, I'm like, wow, man, I need to do this. Right. And I promise to come with a clean, open heart and spirit <laughs> when I get there, ready to learn, ready to learn. So what got you into this? How did you first start into La Ao La Pao? That's a good question. I feel like um, with La Ola Pao, it's a calling, you know, for um, even those who come to just one class, you're meant to be in that class with those particular people for that mm -hmm. amount of time, right. you know, and the same thing goes for for how I got into the class. I took a, I took a, I was led to, to the to the La Ola Pao class at um, UH Manoa, where I was a student. Um, and I studied Hawaiian language and Hawaiian, Hawaiian culture. But before that, I was in early childhood education. Uh -huh. And the class, it was so interesting because the class just opened up. There was no seats available. It started in like five minutes. I got on my moped and I like buzzed <laughs> over there. And I remember sitting Let in the back of the story. <laughs> and I remember sitting in the back of the class and my kumu, kumu ohai, he, he explained um, my ex my whole morning, like it was like to a T, everything that had happened about having a really hard time getting here for whatever reason, here you are, and you are exactly where you need to be, you know, and from there, um, Kumu Ohai went from my teacher to my mentor and my friend, you know, and a family member really, you know, so I learned a lot from, um, from Kumu Ohai, and he had been training, um, he had been, you know, kind of training a small group of us to start to teach. So I, sh I started to teach from probably my first or second year in Lao, you know, and I, he and I would spend time outside of class and go up in the mountains. And, you know, I was really, really privileged and blessed to have, to have, um, you know, have had a kua have us meet and find each other in that particular time. So, um, yeah, I graduated, and after I graduated, I. I taught at a Hawaiian immersion school for a little while, and then I got the call to move up to Lion Arboretum. But um, throughout the whole time, I was I kept up with the La Olapa'o, kept studying and practicing, and um, yeah, and that's pretty much. And then I ended up teaching. I think this is now my third year at Winward, and my set went into my second at KCC. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I know you have a great yeah. reputation too for what you do. Oh, so, thank you. no, thank you for helping teach all of us yeah. because we all need to learn these important things. Yeah. You know. Now I know you have some plants with you today. Let's talk about some of the plants that you have here with you today. Yeah, let's. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, some of the plants that we brought are plants that you would recognize, right? Um, this one is nopaka. This particular nopaka is nopaka kahakai. Beach. Yeah, the beach nopaka. Yeah, nopaka with the beach. So you got the little half flower. Yeah. I love this. I love the story behind it, too. Yeah. It's such a beautiful story. Would you tell the people that are watching what this, the story of nopaka? Um, well, I don't know if we have time to do the whole oh, yeah, story, but it's, it's... In short form. Yeah, in the <laughs> shortest form, that the one, the, the version that I'm familiar with is it's a, um, relevant to two lovers that were separated because of class. And one of them got turned into half of the flower in, in um, at the beach, and the other in the mountains. Oh. Yeah, so they're they're separated. And when you get them two together, it's like glorious and beautiful. Right, and you can put the two flowers together, and it makes one. Yes, yeah. flower. I yeah. love that. And so um, this is nopaka kahakai, um, really really good for um, you know for um, refresh. You know, when you fall down at the beach and you need yeah. to stop the bleeding and start the healing. 
and alpaca is really, really um, powerful at that. It's also, um, I know a lot of a lot of um, kamaaina, a lot of local people will know this one to be really good at the at taking taking the fog off of the snorkel, out of the snorkel. Ah, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So this one can be used, um, yeah, for refresh and to stop bleeding. Uh, we also have uh, this one, who's familiar to, I'm sure, a lot of people. This is the Lokahi. Lokahi is one of our um, one of our common warriors that can be found really, really. I mean, everywhere. Yeah, yeah everywhere in Hawaii. Um, it's a plantain, plantain plumbago, I believe. Lokahi, right? <laughs> and, um, lokahi can be used to pull out, you know, pull out stuff. Right, so if you have a, a boil or a bug bite, it'll it does a really good job at bringing it to the surface. Oh. Among so I'm only gonna give a, some of them because I know we don't have that much time. Right, right. And to go over all of the things yeah, that it can do, but want, if we give a broad, I right. think, base for people to understand, I think is important. Right, and I want I, I think it's important too because these plants are familiar to a lot of people in Hawaii. These ones, you know, at least you have a couple of uses for them. Right. You know, instead of looking them at them as a common weed, now we can shift our perspective and start to look at them, um, you know, at an elevated level. Right. Yeah, which they Absolutely. deserve. And then we have aloe. Yeah, this is our um, our aloe. And there are a lot of different um, variants of aloe. There's the vera. There's the... Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch. Aloe vera. <laughs> there's... Um, uh, that's okay, but we know what it kind of, basically what it looks like, and what and tell us what it does. Arborescence. Arborescence. There yeah. we go. And so, um, aloe can be used internally and externally. A lot of a lot of us we know it to you to be really good for burns, right? Sunburns. Um, we know it to be good for cuts and scrapes, right? Mm -hmm. But internally, it can be really, really useful for inflammation. Yes. yes. I know that's something I use. I use yeah. the aloe vera for so that. So you just got to be careful if you're going to be using it, that you're using the inner gel of the leaf. You're not using the yellow part, and you're not using the skin. No skin. Um, that has a completely different use, so you need to just... And that's the thing, too, that, you know... The cognitive is important, but the practice part of it is part it's of the cognitive. Right. You know, right. getting your, getting your, your um, becoming becoming familiar with how to prepare your lao, right, and how to store your lao. All of those things are really important in the process. It's not just oh, this one's good for Let's this. She pick said, this. let me okay. just pick yeah. it from my head. And, you know, and there's there's also I have to say that there there's also protocol in, in gathering lao, right? There's there's protocol in gathering and in preparing, and those things are really important, especially to, you know, especially to this practice because it is a spiritual practice. You don't just go and do just because you can go and do. Right. You know, you want to make sure that you you stay true to um, to protocol and asking the plant, yeah, and asking the space and having mm -hmm. and having um, right. you know being thankful for what you're mm -hmm. what you're receiving, only taking so much that you need. You know, all of those right. things become a really important protocol, you know, and I think that's yeah. so important. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate that we're running out of time here, but <laughs> I, I've got to close now and I'm pumped because I, there's so many questions I right. have. And I know there's probably so many questions that people out there watching have too. So I want to recommend to everyone to go to Winward and take a class from this wonderful practitioner. And Melania is there. You'll be there next semester, I hope. I will. Okay, so everybody go summer, take the yeah. class. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I... I'm so glad that you joined us today. I hope that you got something from this. I hope you see now that there is hope that's beyond just the pharmacology approach, right? That that there are other ways to do this. And and as Emilani said, make sure you do it in a respectful, proper way. Follow the right protocol. Don't just go start yanking plants up everywhere and you know throwing them in your fridge or something because that's not the way that it works. There is a whole spiritual connection between the plants and between Akua, and we must remember to respect that at all times. I want to thank you guys so much for coming on today. Yeah, yeah. This has gone by way too thank fast. Thank you for having right. us. Yeah. Thank no, no, you thank so you. Much. We might yeah. have to check in again later okay. on and right. yeah. see how things are going and talk about some different plants, so I would love to have you guys back again. I think that would be awesome. great. And for those of you out there that joined us today, I want to thank you for joining us. Please come back again for the next episode of Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair on ThinkTechHawaii.com.